So thanks for, for the invitation and on the purpose that I'm the only one separating um, uh, this talk from lunch. I'll, I'm going to talk about um, understanding water interacting with different surfaces. Originally I was going to talk both photocatalysis and electrochemical applications, but I focus mostly in the electrochemical application setting. So um, in terms of what we are interested on, is, is really being able to simulate using first principles um, an electrochemical cell, and that we are still very far away from doing it um, uh, for many reasons, and starting from the fact that we need to do, um, similar to in thermal transport, uh, long simulations, ab initio molecular dynamic simulations, and large systems. But there are other, other problems that, that separate us from getting there, and they are related to the understanding of the, of the uh, systems that, that are part of this electrochemical cell. And in particular, the, the, the key element is, is liquid water, which is always um, uh, part of, of these cells and the simulation of the metal interacting with liquid water. So ideally what we want to know is the correspondence between the macroscopic voltage that we apply to an electrochemical cell and what is the actual interfacial charge that occurs um, at the surface of the metal interacting with water or with an uh, electrolyte which is liquid water containing uh, different ions. And, and beyond there, of course, is what is the actual structure of the electrochemical uh, double layer that uh, occurs at that interface, and how uh, and applying a voltage to the system modifies such, such a structure. And so the, what we, we aim to simulate is some sort of interface with water and a solid, in this case is a metal, and we need to have a very accurate representation of the two systems. We need to bring them in contact and, and the questions that, that we want to know to start with are, are what is the, the structure of the full structure of the, all the molecules or the liquid itself at the interface, whether it occurs or not, a uh, uh, charge transfer between the two systems and whether that is modified uh, applying a voltage. Um, and so we are going to start from the, from the very, uh, the most simple uh, system that we can imagine, which is just one single water molecule at the surface of, of the metal. And in this case, um, uh, this, this particular simulation is for, is for palladium. And, and there have been many, many studies about what happens, what's the, the, uh, the orientation and of that water and the surface of the metal, depending on, on what is the metal that we have. But the bottom line, uh, what, the, what characterizes this interaction, um, is the fact that, of course, what the metal is going to um, screen the, the charges of the, of the water is going to create a, an image charge on the interface. And here I'm clear I'm showing such, such image charge for a single water molecule. So, so in blue, what you will see is a, is an accum, uh, a depletion of, of electrons, so a locally positive region. And in red is an accumulation of electron or a locally negative region. And so indeed what happens with water adsorbs on such a metal is that you, you have something that is like a mirror and water interacts with the metal by by forming um, pseudo hydrogen bonds, indeed you will have a hydrogen bond of the oxygen with the with the local charge underneath, and, and another, and of course it's sort of pseudo in that there's no real hydrogen in here, but the the depletion of electrons represents the the local charge of a hydrogen, and exactly the same on the other side. However. I mean, according to this, what, what we will expect um, if everything is, is electrostatic is that indeed if you just have one single water molecule, uh, the most stable configuration will be that where the water molecule is placed with the dipole moment uh, perpendicular to the surface. So this <coughs> electrostatically is the most favorable interaction for a dipole with its corresponding image charge. And what you're seeing here indeed is if we just have a classical description, just, just uh, point charges um, um, describing the water molecule, point charges positive and the hydrogen and negative at the oxygen, interacting with a 
perfect metal that creates a, a, the, the corresponding image charges. The most favorable configuration is this one in here, uh, which, uh, with the dipole pointing up. The second metastable configuration is this one in here, and that's a transition state when the molecule is placed horizontally. And we include semi-classically, meaning that we allow for polarization both in the, in the metal and the water molecule, but without any chance transfer, the picture is slightly modified. We see that we acquire some other uh, semi-stable uh, state uh, at this structure, which represents the position of the lone pairs of the water molecule, but you still find that the, the corresponding up and down dipoles are the most stable. However, it happens to be that once you include everything, uh, including the full uh, uh, charge redistribution and, inter and, and charge transfer between metal and water, what you see is that this horizontal position is the most stable. And the reason for that is that the pile repulsion between the electronic cloud of the oxygen and the, and the image charge in the metal is basically dominating the interaction and favors this, uh, uh, this uh, configuration. And so, if one goes and we want to do now simulation of a large uh, uh, systems, plenty of water molecules and metal, there is the, the question of what, how should we do it using cl uh, fully classical, semi-classical, or fully abinicial uh, simulations. And so some of the largest simulations that have been done were done in the group uh, of David Charler. And, and uh, what they did is basically using a, a semi empirical force field with where water molecules were described uh, 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 rigidly, so they are, in a way, purely classical uh, simulation. There's no flexibility on the molecules, and everything is point charges. Interacting with a, with a metal uh, with a force field that actually includes polarization or the creation of image charges in the metal, and this is the, the model used. And it's, it was a model which is in a way fitted to reproduce uh, initial simulations, in particular the adsorption of water uh, on platinum uh, with a, a monolayer, both geometry and, energy, and energetics, but never a full bulk system. And so what was observed in, in the simulation of this system is that indeed, depending on what is the determination of the metal, uh, so either uh, platinum 100 or platinum 111 interfaces, the, the uh, uh, structure of the water layer at the interface is very different. And in particular, what they described is that in, in 100 interfaces, uh, what one obtains is some sort of a hydrophobic water layer where water gets so uh, well bounded to the metal forming bonds with the metal, within the water molecules in the metal, such as it doesn't favor the formation of further hydrogen bonds with the, with the upper water layers. And so what you get is a highly hydrophobic layer and not because of the, not on the metal itself, but on uh, water itself. And, and if we actually go to the 111 uh, structure, what happens now is that we have much more freedom for the water molecules to absorb either um, horizontally, vertically, with hydrogens pointing up or down the layer. And now we open the path to many more hydrogen bonding structures with the water, and that automatically makes this, this layer very hydrophilic. Uh, but of course, here is the question of how much is this uh, correct if, uh, from what I said before, uh, and the fact that there is not actual chance transfer interaction described in the system, and, and non-effect non of uh, Pauli repulsion of, or any other quantum mechanical effect that can occur, on all, and also what is the, the effect of further polarization in the liquid water. And so um, the first thing that we did is precisely studying a system which is much smaller than the one uh, done by uh, the group, uh, uh, the Berkeley group, um, but in a way much more expensive uh, for, uh, from the point of view of simulations because we, we have to simulate uh, the metal and the liquid, everything ab initio. And so there's, uh, I mean, this is the summary of, of a lot of work, and of course a lot of these simulations will depend on what is the initial structure um, that you have for the, for the water. So first of all, we start doing equilibrations using classical force fields, and then once we've done different equilibrations, we move, uh, we switch to, to quantum mechanics. 
mechanics. And, and within quantum mechanics, we also have the, the question of, of what, how to describe the liquid water, which is, we all know, uh, one of the, uh, the systems that is uh, most difficult to describe at the standard, uh, with the standard DFT approaches. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to present which are the results, and, and hopefully that will give us a, an idea of, of why, why these systems are complex, and in part also associated to the fact that liquid water itself um, is close to, a, to a somehow a critical behavior which gives rise to, to uh, structures uh, which largely depend on what are the conditions that occur and the interface between the, the water and the metal. So, um, if we look at the results of these simulations and, and we look at what is the ordering of the first layer uh, interacting with the metal, what we see is that we actually can have two different types of order. One which we call highly ordered, and where you uh, so here uh, basically in, in, um, in red is the density of oxygens and in blue is the density of, of the hydrogens. And this double peak is characteristic of this sort of double layer. And you see these two peaks which correspond to hydrogens which are pointing towards the metal or pointing outside of the metal. And then you can also have structures where indeed you have a much more um, uh, uh, favorable uh, uh, configuration for molecules uh, with most of the hydrogens pointing towards the metal. And so that probably in, in itself says little about what's going on, but it's easier if we go now and look also what it happens in the, in the, in the plane. And so this structure with the up and down type of positions is a really very ordered structure. So this thing here is the, is the unit cell uh, and everything else is pretty boundary conditions. And what you see that occurs is that indeed water is absorbing, forming what is so-called a two-dimensional uh, ice type of layer. Um, and that structure is very stable. And very ordered and very what we call low density type because indeed is 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 relatively close to to a very hydrophilic um, hydrophobic layer. If you go to the other side, where we had a, a favor of larger um, uh, hydrogens towards the metal, and what you see is that there's much more disorder, there's much more mobility in the two systems. And, and what I'm showing here in comparing is what happens whether you simulate using a standard uh, GGA uh, approach or when we use uh, Van der Waals interactions. And it seems like indeed the Van der Waals interactions modify a lot the structure in the system. However, that is not really the case, what is occurring in this, in this system, if we, we look uh, at the full uh, detail of the simulations, is that so this was the, the sort of one type of layer, order layer, two-dimensional ice layer, and this is much more disorder, more high density type. These are the results uh, we do just a PBE simulation, so without Van der Waals and with Van der Waals. And what occurs is that both of them are actually giving uh, the same type of structures, but the Van der Waals one has a very fluctuating type of domains. So we are, what we are seeing is that, that we don't have a unique type of structure uh, forming at the interface. You have domains which uh, interconvert from one another, and the only difference between the Van der Waals and non-Van der Waals is the fact that the, the, this, has, this is very stark and the diffusivity is much smaller and we don't have time scales long enough to uh, explore the motion between the two domains. And so if we look at uh, a different metal, so this of course with palladium, if we look at gold, and um, in this case the charge transfer between water and, and gold is much smaller than with palladium, so the description of this model should be much closer to, to the classical des uh, description, so it's very similar to platinum, and indeed what we see is that the results for gold are very close to the results that were described in the in, in, in in the Berkeley Group's paper, um, where we have a, a very um, a hydrophobic layer, layer fo uh, followed by a very hydrophilic structure. And so, how, uh, why is this relevant? Well, it's relevant because if we want to understand what is the, the, the change of work function of a metal upon solvation, we need to know what is the actual structure of the layer, and the layer happens to be very dynamic and very different in nature. So we want to calculate such change of our function. What we need to do 
is basically calculate what is the work function of the metal in vacuum, and then the change of it, which is due to the dipole of the, the dipolar structure of the, of, the, of the liquid water layer, plus the polarization induced by, by the metal. And that polarization is basically can be decomposed further into the image of, uh, at the metal interface, the polarization of the water, and then the net charge transfer between uh, the two systems. And so we do that analysis. What we see is that indeed, um, depending on whether we have one type of order or the other type of order, we are going to get, so this is for palladium. In the case of palladium, we have uh, the, uh, the, the first uh, order that I described with the bilayer has a net dipole which is pointing out from the surface um, that will decrease the work function of, of the solvator surface. Um, the other type of order has an edge dipole which goes uh, towards the surface and that increases the dipole, um, the, uh, the, sorry, the, the work function. In the case of gold, you get an average and exactly has, these two are very large, so these two dipoles are large in opposite directions. In the case of gold, you have a small uh, uh, dipole and always uh, out, uh, which is a net decrease of the work function. So when you look at experiments, um, indeed, you can have, before I go, I go to that, just yes, one extra thing, which is, um, this was uh, already shown uh, by the group of Gross, they were actually only looking at single bilayer, so not a full liquid layer, and as a function of the metal, and that what they were saying is that depending on how is the, the bilayer, which can be with, with hydrogens down or with hydrogens up, the net change of work function uh, decreases as a function of the, uh, uh, the actual uh, natural work function of the metal. And so what we are studying is for gold and for uh, palladium, which are quite extreme cases, gold uh, has a very small uh, change of work function in palladium, a rather large one. And so, so if we were to compute uh, what is the net, uh, this is the, the delta work function, so basically what we are calculating is the change of work function um, after a, a solvation of water without solvation. And, and so what we see is that, and this already includes uh, averaging for over the two structures, is that it's relatively large for, uh, for palladium and relatively small for gold. There is a change of sign in gold, whether we use uh, PBE or Van der Waals. Uh, but in both cases, uh, what it happens to be is that the one that compares much better with the experiment is the, is the Van der Waals results, which are, which are shown in here. So this is the solvated experimental wave function. Um, and this is uh, with Van der Waals, so relatively close, and this is, this is for gold. But what I want to say is that in order to obtain these, these numbers, um, one cannot just simply do the simulation of one, one single monolayer, or uh, one needs to actually do uh, long molecular dynamic simulations, but they correspond to really average of these two types of domains. And, and the connection I wanted to make to liquid water is that these two types of domains are actually, in, a, in fact, um, we believe, uh, related to the, to the underlying water criticality of having a low density and high density types of fluctuations, which they are enhanced by the interaction with the metal. Now, I told about electrochemistry, and of course what we say that indeed what we want to know is what's the effect of applying a voltage over this, um, which I'm not doing just yet, not even here. And so the, the next thing we did is actually charging our surface in the standard way of charging surfaces um, or charging calculations in, in, uh, in uh, uh, initial simulations, which is just adding a net charge to, to the system with a compensating underlying background and then relate that to what will be the situation uh, with an applied voltage, so, so uh, doping with electrons or charging the surface with electrons uh, will correspond to, a, a, sorry, this is charging the surface, removing electrons, will correspond to a negative voltage or in charging uh, with electrons to a positive voltage. And what we see is that indeed, Charging the surfaces, what it tends to do is to even enhance those two different types of structures. It makes an either more order layer for, uh, uh, in the case of, of positively charged, and in the case of negatively charged, it favors a much more um, disorder layer. Um,
Now, in reality, what we want to know is exactly what occurs if we have an applied voltage, which we cannot do. And so what we did is basically propose to couple the standard uh, transport non-equilibrium Green's, Green's function formalins that is used to, to study electronic transport uh, uh, in, in systems and nanosystems. So I apply exactly the same formalism, um, but uh, where our scattering region now is going to be the actual so-called electrochemical cell, which is metal plus water uh, in, in between. And so we can actually now establish a voltage uh, uh, taking out of equilibrium the, uh, the Fermi level of the two sides of, of our cell and in the standard uh, non-equilibrium uh, uh, transport formalism. So as we say, this arrangement is, an anal, uh, uh, is the same as what we encounter in electronic transport. We have a central scattering region uh, coupled to electrons, and now these two are going to serve as our reservoir. And in principle, the voltages that we apply um, are, course, we can actually match now to experiment. And the other thing that we can do so that's the description of our region. Of course, the scattering region does need to include a, quite a large section of the metal because whatever charge transfer that occurs between the water and the metal uh, needs to be accounted in the scattering region, whereas the electrons are supposed to be already uh, in, in equilibrium and far away from the, uh, from the uh, from the scattering and the interactions with the water. And so we can do this and we can even now, as long as we ensure that we don't have, um, that's the actual system that, that we can simulate, um, we can do this and we can also compute the, um, the forces uh, within the, the scattering region, which uh, are guaranteed to be correct as long as we have no actual electrical current circulating through the system, which in our case is correct because the band gap of, of the scattering region of liquid water is larger than eight electron volts. And so we can have ionic currents and that uh, those are correctly defined, but we, as long as we ensure that we don't have electronic currents, um, we can really simulate this type of, of setting. Um, um, so that's what, what we really want to do, but uh, with this, this work was just a proof of concept and to prove that, that it works. So we started again but with one molecule, but now what we are doing is really doing relaxations of the, of the structure of this molecule in the presence of a, an applied voltage. So in this case, what you're seeing is what is the configuration for a positive voltage. So the water molecule is here, and as you see, that means it's interacting with the negatively charged surface. Um, and so, one of the things, the first thing that, that we, we identified is that in this, the potential energy surface of this water at, surf, at, at the surface as a function of the voltage is really fall, flat um, with the voltage, meaning that up to voltages smaller than, than one, uh, one volt, there's very little happening. The equilibrium configuration shifts, uh, shifts very little to voltages. And it's only when we go to voltages larger than one volt that we start seeing that we start seeing changes. And in this, these are the structures, this is the equilibrium, it's all doing a standard conjugate gradients optimization. And so what you see is that it's a very highly asymmetrical uh, simulation uh, with a positive voltage, I mean uh, charging with electrodes the surface. What happens is that the molecule gets unbound and now of course the, uh, so the, the molecule basically goes far away from the surface and gets unbound. With negative voltage you have a very small change you shift up the hydrogens very little, and the, the distance between the oxygen and the, and the surface decreases slightly. But you can see how, how um, asymmetrical um, is the structure with the voltage. And the reason we understand that is actually, as I started the, the talk with, um, is actually the, this Pauli repulsion between the charge uh, in the water and the metal is strongly bias dependent. And so what we did is, again, uh, do the simulations, but now subtract and repeat the simulations with, uh, uh, for, the, for the electrode uh, itself without the water, and then the water along with the, with the voltage, and subtract one volt for each other. And so in a way, what we are doing is removing what are the effects of the electric field that is coming from the metal, and looking only at what are the effects from the, from the uh, charge exchange between the metal and the water. 
And so this is with, with uh, zero bias. And what you see with zero bias, basically, uh, uh, what you want uh, to look in this picture is the larger, the blue region is the larger is the Pauli repulsion. So you have already a very large Pauli repulsion between water and the metal. When you decrease, um, uh, sorry, the opposite, the less you have it in here, the less, the less blue region is the, the larger the Fermi repulsion. And so you see that you decrease the Fermi repulsion when, when you apply a positive voltage and you increase it when you apply the negative voltage. Um, and the reason for that is basically because you really change how much is the, the amount of charge transfer that occurs between the two um, as a function of the voltage. And so um, that's where, where we are now. So this is for gold, of course, which already to start with, there is a very small charge transfer. So indeed, if you look at the numbers in here, the ISO surfaces are very small, so, so 10 to the minus 3 electrons per cubic angstrom. So how much you see the asymmetry between applying a positive or negative voltage in the case of gold is small because it's, or to start with, there is a small chance transfer between the metal. Um, repeating the same with palladium makes the simulation of this electrochemical cell much more complicated because now the region that we need to describe within our scattering uh, section, the region of the metal, uh, is much larger because precisely of that charge interaction. Um, this is uh, what we are working on now and hopefully we'll have results for not only for different metals but also for larger, uh, uh, sim uh, for larger cell simulations. So I'm going to stop in here. Um, the first thing that, that I do want to highlight is that indeed the order of water biases interfaces, it really reflects um, the fact that water has this instability of forming uh, two uh, different types of structures, low density and high density. Um, the second is that indeed we can now simulate electrochemical cells using the non-equilibrium function formalism uh, to describe this uh, system at, until an external bias. Um, uh, we can do that without having to add chart to the system, so really being able to, to compare to methodology. And so we can now do molecular dynamics, as I say, as long as we ensure that there is not electric tra uh, uh, transport through the system, which is ensured uh, with systems like this, which have a, um, a large gap. And with this, uh, I'll finish. Thank you.